The movie starts with a rich graphical montage, showing the Omnitrix activating and revealing the title screen. Gwen begins the story by moaning about what normal kids do during summer vacation, such as going to the mall, which was what the group was meant to do that day. Prior to revealing they are both chained to the ceiling and going to a Dr. Animo designed device, Max states they were sidetracked and that they are now both bound. According to Animo, his weapon is a DNA bomb connected to a nuclear reactor that, when exploded, would spread into the atmosphere and de-evolutionize the Earth. Ben appears in the red edition as Heat Blast, XLR-8 in the blue edition, and Eye Guy in the gold edition, ready to stop Animo and release Max and Gwen. Ben is hampered, however, when Animo unleashes his newest invention on him, a massive mutant hornet. Ben fights it off for as long as he can before releasing Max and Gwen. As they succeed in catching the hornet, Animo claims there's no way Ben will be able to shut it down in time the simple way, so Ben takes a more direct approach. As Heat Blast, Eye Guy, or XLR-8, Ben shoots a devastating fireball or energy beam at the reactor's water tank or disables the device before pouring more on until the apparatus erupts in a cloud of steam. Since nobody he is sure what it will do, Gwen objects. Ben ignores her and retorts, can't be any worse than what's going to happen if I don't. Ben's assault successfully overloads the system and shorts out the timer on the bomb, thereby eliminating the danger. Unfortunately, a siren sounds, and the bomb emits an energy wave that strikes Heat Blast slash XLR 8 slash Eye Guy. Heat Blast slash XLR 8 slash Eye Guy reverts back to Ben, and Anemo flies away with the mutant Hornet as the Omnitrix crackles with electricity. Max and Gwen rush over to see whether Ben is okay. The Omnitrix then flashes orange and rapidly recharges. Despite Max's warning, Ben dismisses this unusual event and attempts to morph into Stinkfly in order to follow Anemo. The Omnitrix shifts, converting Ben into Stinkfly, Wild Mutt, Diamond Head, and eventually Grey Matter. Anemo flies into a chamber filled with deadly sludge, already calculating his retaliation. Grey Matter flies in on his hoverboard and smacks Anemo in the jaw. The board is destroyed as it flies away and sinks in a tank, and Grey Matter creeps inside Anemo's vest. Grey Matter is grabbed by Anemo and thrown into a vat. Grey Matter, fortunately, manages to clutch a chain that is dangling above it. Anemo slams into a wall with his mutant hornet and is stuck underneath it, trapping him until the cops come. Grey Matter reverts to Ben and collapses, but Gwen saves him with a spell just before he falls into the vat. With that crisis averted, Max takes Gwen to the mall as planned that day and Ben, who is boredly striking martial arts poses at a clothing store mannequin, gets into trouble when the Omnitrix unleashes a burst of energy from nowhere, knocking him and Gwen into a worker and getting the Tennysons barred from the mall. Gwen gets enraged with Ben and rushes away. A dazzling light wakes the Tennysons awake at 3.30 a.m. as they are sleeping inside the rust bucket. When they glance outside, they see a massive ship arrive close to the rust bucket. The ship's pilot steps down, and Ben prepares to become a hero. The pilot, however, fires a diamond shard in front of Ben, exposing it to be Tetrax. Ben and Gwen are delighted to see him since they haven't seen him since they brought down 6-6 the previous time. Tetrax expresses his pleasure at seeing them and tells that he came as soon as he heard. Ben attempts to apologize to Tetrax for destroying the hoverboard he gave him, but Tetrax reveals he has come to Earth because he picked up the Omnitrix's SDM signal. Ben still believes it's just another of the Omnitrix's usual faults. Max, on the other hand, assumes that SDM stands for self-destruct mode. Tetrax claims that it is normal for the Omnitrix to transmit a signal when the countdown starts. Ben believes the watch will self-destruct in a matter of time, and Tetrax adds to his anxieties when he claims Ben will be annihilated along with it. Ben tries hard to recall how the SDM was triggered in the first place. He is reminded of their battle with Anemo at the reactor when he recalls this, but he dismisses it as a mystery and assures Gwen that it is unimportant as long as Tetrax can handle it. Tetrax, on the other hand, discloses that he has no clue how to restore it, but Asmuth, the alleged inventor of the Omnitrix, may be able to. Tetrax claims that he can locate Asmuth's DNA signature on the Omnitrix using the technologies aboard his spacecraft and that they can use this to track him down. He thinks that they have fewer than four days to deactivate the SDM before the clock hits zero after looking at the pattern recurrence on the Omnitrix's hourglass dial, the pattern that represents the countdown. Later, Ben and Tetrax bid Max and Gwen farewell. Max is unable to accompany them because Tetrax feels it would be too dangerous if any alien recognized Max from his plumber days. Max advises Ben to take it seriously, and Ben, who is excited and confident, 
boards the ship with Tetrax. When Tetrax offers Ben a tour of the ship, he is impressed. The spacecraft lifts off after Ben meets Tetrax's pilot, Gludo. In other news, Vilgax, who has just lately fled the Null Void, seizes a ship from some aliens, and one of his bioids picks up the SDM signal. Tetrax examines the Omnitrix aboard his spacecraft but cannot discover Asmuth's DNA signature. Ben instructs him to check on the back, and he does so. He searches for Asmuth and discovers a signal on Incarsicon, a prison planet. When an alert sounds from the lower floor, Ben and Tetrax rush down to investigate. Ben attempts to change into XLR-8 in order to find the intruder, but instead turns into Wild Mutt and learns that the invader is Gwen, who claims that she believed Ben needed support. Wild Mutt, on the other hand, walks headfirst into a button, opening the hatch and expelling the atmosphere into the vacuum of space. Titrax shoots his shards at the airlock controls and seals the hatch to prevent Wild Mutt and Gwen from being sent into space. Gwen explains herself, but Tetrax grows anxious as the Omnitrix's self-destruct countdown begins to accelerate. Later, Ben plays in Tetrax's hoverboard simulator, and Gwen attempts to talk to Ben about the entire incident. Ben assures her that he is not concerned about anything that could happen. Max would not want Ben to be incinerated, or whatever may occur if the watch is not destabilized in time. And Tetrax said that Asmuth would deactivate the Omnitrix, not cure it. So Gwen reminds him that the problem with the Omnitrix concerns more than just him. Tetrax says that disabling the Omnitrix would provide Ben the chance to lead a normal life, even if he doesn't trust her. When Ben expresses his inability to return to a regular life after all he's gone through, Tetrax informs Ben that his transformations accelerate the countdown and instructs him not to use them again in order to maintain time on their side. The Omnitrix then emits another blast of electricity, just like it did in the mall, and this time Ben is zapped badly. Gwen converses with Gluto in the control room as the ship approaches in Karsikan. When they approach, their chat is cut short, and the defensive systems begin to activate. The Incarsican communication system issues a command to get correct authorization, or their spacecraft will be destroyed. Tetrax attempts many codes moments before the Incarsican guns fire until he discovers the correct one. He modifies the spacecraft so that it seems to be a waste truck, and it is admitted inside the jail. Tetrax programs a scanner with Asmuth's signature when they land in a waste disposal bay. He thinks it's too dangerous for the convicts to see Ben and Gwen as humans, so he disguises them. And the three go searching for Asmuth in the jail. A prisoner observes Tetrax and pursues him, telling Ben and Gwen to wait for him while he continues his hunt. Ben then notices someone in the distance who he instantly recognizes as Vilgax. Ben decides that if he had to give up being a hero, he will at least defeat Vilgax once and for all. He turns into Upchuck and flees to confront the prisoner, leaving Gwen vulnerable to the other inmates. Upchuck strikes Vilgax while the prisoner who is following Tetrax, revealed to be 6-6, attacks him and Upchuck, and the prisoner who seems to be Vilgax battle. Upchuck is apprehended, and the prisoner exposes herself to be a female member of the Chimera Sui Generis species, kicking Upchuck back to Gwen. When he reverts to Ben, the convicts understand he is in possession of the Omnitrix and surround the two. Ben attempts to activate the Omnitrix in order to morph into something new, but the Omnitrix has now run out of time and must be recharged. Gwen and Ben each grab a pipe and battle against the invaders. When Tetrax notices the disturbance, he and 6-6 start fighting. He mounts a hoverboard and rides to Ben and Gwen's help, fighting the inmates. When the female Chimera Sui Generis comes, she recognizes the Omnitrix and reveals herself to be Asmuth, the creator they've been looking for. Gwen performs a spell that knocks out an alien prisoner, and Ben begs Asmuth to repair the watch, which she agrees to do provided Ben releases her. A prisoner drags Ben away, but the Omnitrix discharges energy again, knocking him unconscious. It did, however, offer the type of cover they all needed to flee. Ben awakens as Gwen and Tetrax hurry up to him. Gluto flies over and unlocks the ship, and the three escape with the captives following. They all manage to get the inmates off the ship while allowing Asmuth to board. Ben seals the spacecraft, and 6-6 rides on it before being blasted off and floating in space. Asmuth scans the Omnitrix, but she shows herself to be Asmuth's helper, my ex. The Omnitrix's DNA signature led them to her since she destroyed his and replaced it with her own because he never gave her the credit she deserved. Tetrax is enraged when she confesses that she can't halt the countdown because Asmuth doesn't trust her with the abort sequence and demands an explanation for not shooting her back to Incarsican. Myax claims to know where Asmuth is, Xenon. Tetrax is terrified by the word, 
and she explains why the Omnitrix continues emitting random energy bursts. The watch is strained to control all the energy it's creating for the Big Bang, and they'll keep increasing more stronger until the ultimate explosion. Ben is aware that if the watch explodes, he will be annihilated, but Myax assures him that he will not be the only one to perish. Tetrax then discloses a secret he hid from Ben about the true severe stakes of their quest. If the Omnitrix is allowed to explode, the resulting energy ripple would physically split apart the cosmos. Asmuth developed the self-destruct to keep the Omnitrix out of the wrong hands, according to Myax, but he never planned on anybody being dumb enough to set it off. Ben is furious with Tetrax for failing to inform him of the gravity of the issue. Tetrax never informed Ben because he expected Ben to be more worried about how this would affect him. Ben attempts to object, but Tetrax challenges Ben to consider why he uses the Omnitrix in the first place. Is it because it's the right thing to do, or for the excitement of being a hero? Meanwhile, Vilgax picks up 66 and the Omnitrix signal at Incarsican. Myax equips the Omnitrix with an inhibitor that prevents additional energy surges. The spacecraft lands to Xenon, which is entirely veiled thanks to a gadget invented by Azmuth that absorbs all light within range. Xenon is encircled by an asteroid belt that has similarly been veiled by the gadget, thus the asteroid belt is now primarily made up of failed attempts. Ben is instructed by Tetrax to leave the ship and use the Omnitrix's homing technology to guide Gluto and the others across the field safely. The Omnitrix emits a homing signal, and Ben directs the spacecraft, while Gluto receives up a signal from a massive oncoming piece of debris that drills tethers into the ship's load. The Omnitrix puts out a beam that lights the gadget, giving light back to the quadrant and asteroid field. They arrive on Vilgax's ship. Vilgax wants the Omnitrix as the ship is being infiltrated by Beoids. Ben receives a pod from Tetrax, so he may get back to the ship. Following Vilgax and 66 over the barrier are a number of Vilgax's bioids and Tetrax's spaceship. Ben has problems understanding out the pod since it is designed for Gluto. Tetrax eliminates the bioids aboard the ship. The pod is speeding towards a chunk of debris. Ben flies to the ship after figuring out how to drive the pod, and he is followed by Mechadroids. Tetrax puts Myax a suit and a cannon aboard the ship, and the two head out to remove the ship from Vilgax's tether lines before both spacecraft are destroyed as they hit Xenon's atmosphere. The control room is empty as Vilgax and 66 enter there. He sends 66 after Myax and Tetrax when he spots them outdoors. As well as he can, Gluto is shown to be still battling Vilgax in the control room. Ben deciphers the pod's armaments and battles the mechadroids while Gwen uses a spell to eliminate Beoids with the Hover Simulator. She dashes inside the control room, where Vilgax and Gluto are squabbling. Ben avoids the Mechadroids in the pod and makes his way to the spacecraft, which Tetrax unlocks for him. When Vilgax notices Ben, he orders his Mechadroids to connect to the pod. 66 appears and assaults Tetrax and Myax. Ben shoots 66 and knocks him and his helmet off the ship. When Gwen enters the control room, she sees that Gluto has been destroyed. A Beoid has her in its sights, but just as it is about to fire her, Gluto recovers and engulfs himself around the Beoid's blaster, shattering it and splattering him throughout the control room. Ben's pod bursts, but he lands aboard the spacecraft, where Vilgax awaits. Vilgax attacks Ben, and he flees since he can't accomplish anything with the Omnitrix in its present form. Ben attempts to inform Vilgax that the Omnitrix is programmed to self-destruct, but Vilgax appears unconcerned. Meanwhile, Myax and Tetrax release their spacecraft from Vilgax's grip. After failing to reach an agreement with Vilgax to assist him in finding Azmuth and stopping the countdown, Ben opens the hatch, sending Vilgax hurtling into space as the spacecraft approaches Xenon's atmosphere. Gwen attempts to fly it but fails, and Ben comes to assist. Gwen informs him that Gluto sacrificed himself for her, which she describes as completely selfless, something Ben would not comprehend. Tetrax and Myax re-enter the ship, and Ben and Gwen stop the ship from collapsing, but they crash nevertheless after flying into a rock pillar. The spacecraft is sliding into a canyon, but they are able to halt it before it crashes over. Tetrax and Myax arrive, and the four of them take hoverboards to Azmuth's property. They discover it overtaken by vines, which turn up to be feral Florana, and attack Gwen. The gang shoots at the Florana, but they continue to arrive. Gwen protects Ben from one, but the creature captures her and carries her away. When Ben sees Gwen in grave danger, he has no option but to transform into Four Arms. Oblivious to the perils of the countdown despite Myax's warning, Four Arms pursues the Florama in an effort to save Gwen, but he gets trapped by many vines, which pull her beneath and consume her. All of the other Florana stop fighting and flee once it has Gwen. Four Arms breaks free and attempts to save Gwen, 
but he is unable to do so because an unbreakable hatch closes behind him. Four arms pound on the ground, unable to open the hatch. Titrax informs Ben slash Four Arms that there is no way to rescue her at this time. Those wild Florana wouldn't back down until they got one of them. Four Arms slaps the wall hard, claiming that it should have been him who died at the Florana's tentacles, which he utterly destroyed, out of bitter rage over losing Gwen on his watch. Ben falls on the ground after changing back, blaming Myax for the whole incident. Ben argues that if she hadn't assisted Asmuth in creating the Omnitrix, he would never have discovered it, and Gwen would still be alive. Myax responds to Ben by saying that she is a selfish and self-centered individual, but that it takes one to know one. Tetrax calms them down and leads them to a location where Asmuth may have gone if he had survived such an onslaught. Ben glances back at the hatch where Gwen was taken before heading to Asmuth's lair, sad that he couldn't help her. Ben is devastated by his biggest failure and must now determine a how to tell the news to Max. Tetrax informs Ben that he understands what he's going through and shares his Genesis story. He was a greedy mercenary when he was Ben's age, working for the finest of the best, no matter how terrible they were. It was just a matter of time until he was hired by Vilgax. He took the last puzzle component Vilgax needed to assault Tetrax's homeworld. When the inhabitants refused to submit, he entirely destroyed the world to serve as a lesson. When his biggest failure resulted in the ruin of his house and everyone in it, he turned for the better. When he found out Vilgax coveted the Omnitrix, he resolved never to allow Vilgax get his hands on another deadly weapon again. After hearing the story, Ben decides to take responsibility for the chain of events that resulted in this catastrophe, reasoning that his careless behavior at Dr. Anemo's reactor triggered the SDM. Tetrax advises them to continue until the Omnitrix self-destructs in order to prevent Gwen, Gluto, and the others from dying in vain. As Myax comes to a stop, Tetrax saves Ben as he and Ben fly over a security laser that has activated an energy field. The Omnitrix is recognized by a camera. A hologram of a mechanical entity enters and asks Ben what he is doing with his Omnitrix, revealing himself to be Asmuth. Asmuth seals more doors and rejects Ben's request to turn off the SDM after he identifies himself and explains the problem. Asmuth denies Ben's insistence that Gwen gave up her life to stop the bomb but Ben won't let up. As Ben transforms into Cannon Bolt, his wrath boils over, and he declares that it is now his duty. He tries to break through the doors by charging headlong at them, but they are protected by electromagnetic barriers that should deter such attempts. Ben revs up at full speed and crashes the doors down like a row of dominoes, declaring that he's gone too far to turn back and will not be refused. Finally, Cannon Bolt insists that Asmuth turn off the Omnitrix, but when Asmuth refuses, Ben proclaims that since the cosmos is doomed anyhow, he will not be denied the joy of defeating Asmuth first. Ben delivers a devastating punch, destroying his outfit. Cannon Bolt reverts back to Ben as Asmuth climbs out, showing himself to be a Galvin. Tetrax then orders Asmuth to halt the countdown, but claims that the universe being destroyed is the best thing that could happen given his inability to see the good in people, revealing that the Omnitrix was intended to be a device for understanding all beings in the universe, but people like Ben and Vilgax have caused it to be perceived as a weapon. Ben describes how, although he has used the Omnitrix for personal benefit on occasion, he has mostly utilized it to defend people who cannot protect themselves. He ultimately persuades him to alter his views by reminding him that in order to save the world, he can't simply be a selfish jerk like Ben used to be. The four escape from the crumbling lair outside, where Vilgax, Six Six, and a horde of mechadroids and bioids are waiting for them. Vilgax orders Six Six to attack as mechadroids and bioids land. Asmuth inquires as to why Ben continues to defend the Omnitrix, and Ben responds that it is because he considers individuals other than himself. He shoots several bioids, and two mechadroids self-destruct as a result of a spell performed by Gwen, who joins the fight with Gluto. Ben, overcome with emotion upon seeing his cousin alive again, rushes to hug Gwen, who reveals that Gluto regenerated from particles left on her clothing when he detonated back on the ship. He rescued her from the wild Florana after regaining his strength. Six Six assaults them, and the Mechadroids and Beoids attack them, but the gang fights and kills the robots while Tetrax fights Six Six. Ben's gun has been destroyed, and he and Myax are being pursued by Beoids. Ben removes the Omnitrix's energy burst deflection mechanism, resulting in a tremendous energy explosion that kills all Beoids and knocks Vilgax and Six Six away. Meanwhile, Asmuth deactivates the Omnitrix by removing the dial moments before the countdown hits zero. Vilgax rides aboard one of the giant mechadroids that rise to the group's location. When Ben admits the Omnitrix is no longer useful, 
Vilgax promises he will have Azmuth create him a better weapon. Azmuth steals the dial off the Alnitrix as Tetrax destroys a Mechadroid. Gwen then reminds Ben that he doesn't need the Alnitrix to be a hero, and Azmuth reattaches the dial, which not only reactivates the Alnitrix, but also unlocks and turns Ben into a Tokastar, a metamorphosis he labels way big. Way big crushes all of Vilgax's men before capturing him, while Tetrax defeats 6-6. Six -six. Way Big is irritated by Vilgax's claws in his palm and hurls Vilgax into space. Azmuth constructs a ship from the dispersed Mechadroid components after the fight. Ben thanks him and hands him the Omnitrix back. Azmuth lets him retain it, explaining that the only reason he built it in the first place was to get a deeper knowledge of the universe's creatures. He then confesses that he was affected by Ben's advice about thinking about others as well as oneself, and tells Ben that if he can make that understanding happen, he sees no reason why he couldn't retain the Omnitrix. Asmuth is finishing up his spacecraft, and Myax is accompanying him. Asmuth refuses Ben's plea for master control and mockingly asks if he wants to solve the problem on his own as a true hero would. Later, Gluto demonstrates his fluency in English and proves that he is aware of every epithet Ben has thrown at him. At the end of the movie, Tetrax sends Ben and Gwen out on Earth with a brand new hoverboard. Following that, the Tennysons get a radio transmission from the Rust Bucket informing them that zombies are invading them all, and the film concludes as the squad prepares to confront them.